So just as we, you know, here we are 2023 and you get all these people and I want to get your opinion on this because we really want to respect people's views on how they think of life. So you get people every way from, you know, they are incarnations of this person or there's, they, they know there's a solar flash coming that's going to raise everybody's uh, vibration or there's different things happening or this download or that load or whatever, whatever, whatever. Is it possible that all of that is true and they are just specifically tapped into a very different stream of consciousness than other people so is it you know instead of saying instead of coming from the place of saying ah you know you're you're a lunatic aren't you you know what i mean it's um instead of coming from that place is there a real possibility that it's just maybe for them and they may be seeing that or are they tapping into from what you know josh are they tapping into a, a lower realm a lower realm or a it's different realm or how do you see it I, you know, that was one of the best segues I've ever seen because that's exactly where I was about to go. So both both points are true, okay? But first, first I have to do is I have to get a little philosophical, right? I, I have to talk about truth and God real, real quick. And, and it's really, I call this the ultimate paradox, okay? Yes. So the first thing is, is I look at God as the absolute, the totality of everything. There's nothing that's outside of totality, right? If that's the truth, that means that totality or absolute is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. It's unknowable, incomprehensible, that that us in a finite perspective right here cannot take it all in. So therefore, is we have a relationship with our existential reality, with our internal reality. And that develops this relationship into a self evident truth. And so we all derive these various different self-evident truths of our existential reality, of our existence. And we come together and we talk and communicate about them. And we have a consensus reality, which is kind of like an aggregate reality of, of our, all of our self-evident realities, all of our understandings. Good example of this, the, the originals, the aborigines in all Australia, um, the, in their um, cosmology, they believe that the whole universe is held on the back of a turtle hmm. now isn't that interesting the thing is is they're not wrong because when you start looking at the mapping of the stars mm -hmm. in the milky way galaxy you can pinpoint the turtle and how the stars of the milky way lie on its back hmm. and so they weren't wrong they just had a perspective from their own level of of mental faculties mm -hmm. where they derive that information from and I'll come back to that point in a second, but we, I want to get into the touch on the God thing real quick. Um, th I call this the ultimate paradox, and, it, and it's really, really simple. How do you define nothing? <laughs> You're good with this stuff. Dun, 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 Okay, how do you define nothing? I've never been asked that question, question before, Josh. But well, nothing answer. is nothing. Huh. Well, it's a trick question. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> because, uh, because you can't define nothing. Yeah. The moment that you define it, it becomes something. Right. Oh. It can become something. Exactly. So, therefore, nothing <laughs> has never existed. Nothing has never existed oh. in the eternity of all existence. So, if nothing has never existed, that means that everything has always existed. Good point. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is kind of one of the, the, the mental processes that I utilize to extrapolate and understand the universe, God, everything around me, is the fact that nothing has never existed. Mm -hmm. And this is the dualistic nature of a universe. Yeah. Is you have nothingness, and then you have everything. And mm -hmm. the fact that nothingness has never existed is the only reason why everything has always existed. And so it's a mental conundrum to think about. It. <laughs> now, in um, 2009, I read a, a fascinating book and uh, a sequence of events occurred in my life that completely transformed me spiritually. Um, I read a book by Dr. Michael Newton called Journey of Souls. For anybody out there not familiar with this book, uh, Dr. Michael Newton was a atheist, hypnotherapist, never had any spiritual inclination in his life. In the 1960s, he started treating people with hypnotherapy um, and trying to find their trauma that was inducing pain within their life by hypnotherapy. And he had this one uh, person that was there and he took her back 
to a point he said take me back to the point where this pain began and she took her to took him to a past life and he goes whoa this is crazy what if this person's making it up well after 20,000 different clients what he did is he compiled records of all these people not using their real names but these people had never had any connections with each other one thing he realized early on is that he, not only could he take them to a past life but he could take them in between lives so he could take them to the point of death and then where they went after death. And after these 20,000 trials that he did on these people in hypnotherapy, taking them in between lives, every single one of them who never had any connectedness to each other described the same place with a 92.5% accuracy. That's pretty strong. And what was that place? Uh, the place was a world of sp the spirit world. It was very similar to this world. It was kind of a hierarchy of, of souls where you have highly advanced souls and you have younger souls that are learning and that we go through incarnations to, to learn the lessons to embody us and help us grow as, as a soul. And there's a lot more into that. So one of the things I did is I went out there, I got my master Reiki certification um, and I went out there and I got a life between life kind of hypnotherapy session. Cool. Um, in this session, I went to a place that was, not like any of the other 92%. It was completely different. Do you um, remember it? Like, or did you have to vividly. fight back? You remember vividly? Vividly. I can tell you this whole, egg, I can see, I, I met one being in there and I remember exactly what the place looks like. I can't really describe it in words. Just, I just, I say clouds of energy that formulated walls that were transparent where you could see the the skies of the universe and the stars and solar and galaxies, everything outside of it. Um, there is this low hum music that always played that wasn't really music, but it was low hummed and it was just beautiful. You always felt at peace, but the place was desolate. And I, I see this bean standing there and she's about seven foot tall. Um, she's got very, very skinny facial figure, very, very slim body. And she's wearing this white gown that's just shimmering. And she, her skin is kind of shimmering. And uh, she introduces herself to me and says, I've been waiting for you. And we, we start talking and uh, she kind of shows me past lives, like multiple lives that we've lived together throughout the aeons. And um, then tells me kind of what's going to happen to humanity and the path that I need to be on and all these different things. Wow. Well, this bean, so about six months later, this bean comes back into my life. And I am I had this uh, certain type of meditation that I did to where uh, I call it canceling out light. And it's really easy as you, if you're sleeping in a completely dark bedroom, you mm -hmm. leave your door open just a crack with a hallway light on. So you have like a, a, a beam of light that just comes through, mm -hmm. excuse me, in my room that I was in, it hit the, uh, the, the light fixture at the top. And I would look at the light and I'd use my mind while my eyes were open to basically move, remove the light and create darkness in the room again. And so you, 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 with your eyes open, you focus on the light and it eventually starts disappearing and it starts collapsing into this point of darkness. And when you get to that point of darkness, you're typically in hypnagogia, uh, this hypnotic state between sleep and wakefulness. And you can really transcend the astral realms during this point in time. And so um, I'm getting there and I'm closing the light and all of a sudden I hear in my left ear outside of my ear, Josh, Josh. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And so it was weird because I turned and went towards it, but I wasn't like, I was outside of my body at this point in time. Mm -hmm. And I'm going up like this tunnel and it's like just this kind of like grayish smoky tunnel. And I come up there and there's this being, same woman talking to two other beings, two or three other beings. And uh, I'm standing there and I'm like, you called me. And she's like, how are you here? I'm like, you just called me. She goes, there's no way possible that I could have called you. I'm talking to you right now. And she points to one of the beings in front of her, as in saying that was me, that she was talking to my higher self. And there's no way that my lower self could be up here. And I'm just, I was completely confused at this point in time. Wow. So you were talking, this, 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 this feminine energy of sorts was talking to a being, which the being was your higher self, but the physical embodiment of you showed up. noticed so much is that the intuition that I am receiving uh, on a daily basis, it's, 
it, the, the messages are so clear and they come in like, you know, yeah, I hear a lot of people talking about, I get a download of this and a download of that. And that is the God's honest truth. Messages are just literally flooding in because the pineal gland is being decalcified. And